In this video, we will look into our data set a little bit more and uh, we will begin with um, loading two packages, um, the tidyverse and the Woolrich package. So the Woolrich package is uh, giving you access to uh, many of the data sets that we will be using throughout the course and those come from published studies uh, that are talked about extensively in the book. Um, Tidyverse is another package which we will be discussing in greater detail later and uh, it's, it's something that you almost cannot live without now uh, if you use R uh, because it's really nice for cleaning data and um, uh, just doing exploratory analysis. So um, the, the first thing you want to go ahead and do is make sure that you have installed those packages. So um, install the Tidyverse and hit install if you don't have it already. Uh, and similarly, if you don't have Woolridge, so after you have, let's say, here we can give it a space if we want to install multiple packages at once. So we can go ahead and do this and hit install. Uh, I already have those installed, so I'm not going to do this part, OK? Uh, but the important thing is to make sure that you load these packages um, once you've installed them to tell R that we will be using these. Not everything that's right here um, in our uh, package library is, is used, okay? So once you see the check mark against something, then we know it's being used, okay? So we'll go ahead and run these two commands and uh, notice it went through perfectly and the check marks should appear next to those packages. That's when we know those are loaded. Okay, this is just to check. You don't have to do this. If it's loaded perfectly, these will appear. So tidyverse and then you see Woolridge. Okay, so anything that's stick marked here um, is already loaded in the system. So some of those checks that you see are coming or the ticks that you see are coming from uh, the, uh, the base R um, a package. Okay. So uh, let's get get started. So now I want to make sure that I have set my working directory. So you can go to session, set your working directory, choose the directory, however you want to do it the way we saw it in previous videos. Okay. I'm going to check where I am uh, right now. So I am in desktop. That's where I want to be. Okay. Now I'd shown you another way to load the data, a different way to load the data before, but I'm going to do it a second using a second method. So you can say load and then you can call uh, call on the data, right? So this is the name of my data set that's sitting in on my desktop. So I'm gonna um, I'm going to run this and notice that it loaded on the right hand side. Okay. Now I'm not gonna go through this again. We saw this in the in the previous video, but if you want to look at the structure of your data set. And you, you can see that there are all these different variables and those are numeric variables, all of those, okay? Now, um, we also talked about um, looking at the minimum value and the maximum value and the range for, for our uh, different variables. Um, here we are going to, in this uh, video, we are going to be looking at the um, variable lunch which is basically telling us about the percentage of students who were eligible for a free or reduced cost lunch. Okay, so if you don't remember what these variables are, you can always click on describe and or view describe and, you know, you can take a look at what these mean. So here lunch tells us this, these are the percentage of students eligible for a free or reduced cost lunch. And let's say we wanted to explore uh, lunch a little bit more. Okay, so let's say um, the first thing we want to do is we want to count for how many schools does lunch equal 100, okay? So in how many schools uh, is the percentage of students eligible for free or lunch, uh, free lunch or reduced cost lunch equal 100%, okay? So for this, we can um, do the following. We can start with our data, okay? And we are going to write down a percentage sign greater than percentage sign okay this is called the pipe operator okay it is called the pipe operator and is used heavily in the 
tidyverse package okay what this does is it, it sort of has a similar um, appeal to what we were doing before but notice here um, we were applying the function to something that was going on within the parenthesis okay here we are going to start with data this is we're going to basically do um, one step at a time right so we're going to go in in a sequence we're going to say let's get the data and then we're going to use the function count and then we're going to select the variable that we want to count for so we want to count when does lunch equal 100 so because this is this is a value that lunch is taking we're going to put two equal to signs okay so we're going to see um, we're going to run this and see what happens so notice this gives us some output here it says lunch equals equals 100 um, it falls in 1729 cases and is true in two cases so it seems like two schools in our sample have 100% um, of students eligible for free or reduced cost lunch okay we can also tweak this a little bit um, and say now count schools where lunch is greater than or equal to 50 okay how many schools um, uh, for how many schools does lunch take the value uh, of 50 or more right so we can run this and we see that it is true for 567 schools right so in other words if you wanted to calculate how many what's the percentage of schools um, we can basically say this is 567 divided by the total number of schools so 567 plus 1164 or you already know how many schools there are this is 1731 so we're going to say hit enter and this basically tells us this is um, true for 32.7 percent of the schools right so 32.7 percent of the schools um, uh, serve lunch or, or uh, serve or are um, basically um, for for lunch this value takes um, is 50 or more okay um, now we can get to the next thing which is basically calculating averages or means uh, this also can be do, done in two different ways. I'm going to show you a simple method and then I'm going to show you how we do it in the tidyverse. Okay, so method one is basically you say mean, right? It's literally mean. If you, know, if you don't know how to use this, you can also go to the help menu, right? So help and say mean and this will populate something on the right hand side right so it tells you how to use this function okay so you can see um, how this is used so what I want to do here is I want to get the mean for the lunch variable okay so I'm going to go inside my data set and I am going to pull the lunch variable okay and this is going to give me the mean Notice that the mean um, for that variable is 39.4, okay? So 39.4 uh, is the 39.4 percentage of students are eligible for a free or reduced cost lunch. That's what it means. And this is on average, right? So this is, that's what we calculated. We can do this another way. We can say data right and we can apply the pipe function the pipe function is basically saying take the data and do something to it okay so we can do use the uh, command summarize and we can call this uh, mean underscore lunch so in case we were calculating the mean we're just creating a new, new variable we're calling it mean underscore lunch and we are saying this is just the mean of lunch and uh, let's run this and see that this also gives us 39.4 okay so it's really up to you whether you write you know you write your code in the tidyverse or sometimes you you just use this 
in base R, this method one was in base R, um, but method two is sometimes more scalable. So you'll see that later on that you might be using this uh, more often, even though this seems a lot simpler um, for now. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is maybe you wanna calculate the standard deviation of something, okay? If you don't know how to calculate um, standard deviation, you can just uh, go in the help menu in the search bar, type in um, standard deviation okay and okay a lot of stuff comes up here um, but in the stats package um, we usually go with what the stats package says for some of the simpler things we want to do in standard deviation okay so here it says the function itself is SD okay and you can put um, you can basically run the function SD through a um, a numeric vector, right? So lunch is numeric, right? So we, we can basically say here SD and we can go inside data and we can say lunch, okay? So now this is going to give us the standard deviation of lunch, which is 26.57, okay? So we've calculated that. Um, the last thing I'm going to do here um, is calculate the coefficient of variation okay and this is basically if you want to calculate how spread out are the values in your data set relative to the mean so this is calculating the spread of your data relative to the mean okay you can go in the next line but make sure you can if you go to the next line that you also comment out what you're doing and the only thing that appears here is um, the command itself right so I'm gonna say let's call the coefficient of variation CV and I'm going to now I know what this is how this is calculated so I'm going to basically say this is the standard de deviation of my data so if I'm doing this for the lunch variable I'm going to calculate that the standard deviation for lunch divided by the mean for lunch okay and so when I run this I get the I don't get anything here but because I've stored it in the variable CV and notice CV takes the value of 0.67 Okay, so CV takes the value. So I can, if I want to know what CV is, I can just type in CV and then run. And there I see that this is 60.67, um, okay, or 67.3%, um, which is sort of moderately high, right, um, uh, coefficient of variation. You could have done this another way. If I stored um, standard deviation of lunch in this variable if I assign this this way and ran this okay and then if I said mean of lunch let's say I want to say let's say average lunch because we already defined what mean lunch is so let's say average lunch is the mean of lunch okay if we ran this now notice on the right hand side we have average lunch and the standard deviation of lunch okay so I could have just done this I could have said what is the standard deviation of lunch right so this is appearing divided by the average lunch okay and if I run this I should get the same answer okay so 67.3 percent again Okay, so that's it.